Ultimate Fighting Championship star Evan Tanner has died. The 37-year-old former UFC fighter died in the desert east of San Diego. Police say after days of searching for Tanner, his body was found Monday about two miles from his campsite near the Palo Verdes Mountains where temperatures have reached 110 degrees. In the summer of 2008, UFC fighter Evan Tanner announced his plans for a solo trek into the California desert of Imperial Valley. The announcement was met with some concerns over his safety and potential well-being, claims that he quickly dismissed. He publicly stated, quote, This isn't a version of Into the Wild. I'm not going out into the desert with a pair of shorts and a bowie knife to try to live off the land. And to think, there are still places in the world where man has not been, where he has left no footprints, where the mystery stands secure, untouched by human eyes. I want to go to these places, the quiet, timeless, ageless places, and sit, letting silence and solitude be my teachers. This statement was the last time that he would be seen alive. What leads a man to venture out alone into the desert heat? To answer that question, we need to look at just what kind of man Evan Tanner was. If you enjoy documentaries like this one, consider leaving a like, subscribing, and turning on post notifications. We post videos like this every single week. Now, without further ado, let's get back into it. I can stand up for these things that I believe in. I can stand up, I can, I can speak out, and I will be heard. I can change the world. Evan Lloyd Tanner was born in Amarillo, Texas in 1971. By all accounts, when he was young, he was shy, soft-spoken, and a bit of a loner. This mild-mannered nature made him a ripe target for bullies. According to his friends at the time, Tanner was bullied relentlessly. When asked why he would never fight back against these bullies, Tanner replied that he believed God would be mad at him if he did. He also never had much of a relationship with his family besides his brother. His father had left when he was a baby. His stepfather wasn't someone he ever developed a real relationship with, and his mother left him and his brother to raise themselves when Tanner was still in high school. In fact, when he passed away, he hadn't spoken to his mother or stepfather for years. This lack of solid attachment seemed to be a factor in creating the deep-seated restlessness that would follow him his whole life. One day, when he was in middle school, the bullies seemed to just push him a little too far. They cornered him behind a dumpster, probably not for the first time, but this time, they were the ones who got beaten. A childhood friend, Deanna Epperson, lived across the street from Tanner and recalled the event. She said that, quote, he proceeded to whip them both badly. Nobody could believe it. Sweet Evan Tanner and his penny loafers? We really didn't understand. Tanner's physical prowess only improved as he grew up. In high school, he ran from school to home every day, over five miles. He played football, cycled, pole vaulted, snowboarded, and more. He took up wrestling midway through high school and excelled far beyond anyone's expectations almost immediately. He won the Texas State Championships back-to-back -back in his junior and senior years. Then, suddenly, he stopped wrestling. You know, I'm not... I'm not a fighter. I'm not in this to for personal glory. Tanner didn't join the wrestling team when he went to school at Simpson College in Iowa to become a doctor, and it wasn't immediately clear to anyone why. Evan Tanner would later speak of a sense of restlessness, the way in which he saw himself as a drifter with, quote, gypsy blood. Living up to this idea beyond just his abandonment of wrestling, he also dropped out of college at the age of 19, despite making the Dean's List during his time there. From then, he drifted from town to town. He took on various odd jobs, many which made use of his physical talents. He worked as a bouncer, a dishwasher, a framer and construction worker, a slaughterhouse worker, a ditch digger, and so on. He attended another college, the University of Oklahoma, for one semester before eventually drifting his way to his hometown of Amarillo. He was there just to do another odd job or two, but it was when he was in Amarillo that he was approached by a fight promoter. Given his years as a wrestling champ, the promoter was interested in getting Evan Tanner to climb into the ring for a mixed martial arts match. Tanner decided to go for it, fought three fights that night, including one against future UFC heavyweight contender Paul Anthony Buentello, and ultimately won the hometown tournament. That victory would change the course of his life forever. Around the time when he won the fight in Amarillo and decided to take the sport more seriously, Tanner lived alone in a cabin in Texas. He had no methods of proper training or fight coaching, so he turned to the only thing he could. He bought a jiu-jitsu videotape from the prominent Gracie family. 
His location at the time was so remote that he powered his TV and VCR with a generator. Despite a training environment that most would consider ludicrous and far below subpar, Tanner continued to excel. He fought in a local championship in Iowa and Texas. Eventually, he made his way to Japan to compete in the Pancrase organization. He would become the first American fighter to win the Japanese Neo Blood tournament. He won five fights overseas before finally being invited into the UFC. Tanner made his UFC debut in 1999, just seven years after the UFC itself was founded. He fought against another fighter from his hometown of Amarillo, Texas, a man by the name of Daryl Golar. Tanner beat Golar via rear naked strangle in the first round. After three wins in the UFC, Tanner was offered a fight against Tito Ortiz for the UFC Light Heavyweight Championship. He was knocked unconscious in the first round. Shortly after that fight, Tanner began training with Team Quest for the first time because up to that point, he had become a world-class fighter purely through videotapes and self-teaching. By late 2004, he had a record of 8 wins, 2 losses in the UFC and was offered a chance at the UFC middleweight title by matchmaker Joe Silva. There's actually a story the UFC wanted to sign him and Joe Silva couldn't reach him. And Evan was on something the kids call MySpace, and he was he was glued on that thing, nonstop. And Joe Silva had to form a MySpace account that said Joe with the UFC logo and send Evan a message that way, just to give him a contract for a whole bunch of money and get him back in the ring. But there was just one problem. Publicly, Evan Tanner was a fearsome fighter with an incredibly inspiring success story and undeniable physical talent. Privately, though. Tanner had for years struggled with a battle more fearsome and deadly than any fight in the ring, and that was his struggle with alcohol. He had taken up drinking in his years as a drifter, working odd jobs, and it was starting to become a real problem. When the phone call from Joe Silva came, Tanner was at a point where he would regularly go binge drinking for days and not eat any food in the process. When Silva called, Evan Tanner weighed just about 175 pounds, 10 pounds below the weight limit for the middleweight class, and probably 30 pounds lighter than Dave Terrell, the man that he would be fighting. He had just two months to get back into shape and into the proper weight class, but never shying away from a challenge before, and always seeing every hardship as just another adventure, Tanner decided to accept the offer and get to work. He stopped drinking, trained for hours a day, and got a proper diet. Two months later, at UFC 51, he got in the ring against Dave Terrell, and he won in the first round. That night, he became UFC middleweight champion. I actually watched that fight live, I have it on VHS somewhere, and it was an earth-shattering fight. Just to be clear, Evan Tanner was significantly an underdog. He was not looked at as a person that was going to be able to compete with Dave Terrell. And that's without us even knowing about the backstory of him having a drinking problem. That's just man versus man, Dave Terrell is going to crush him. So that upset shocked the world. To Tanner, however, failure and success in the ring didn't seem to matter all that much. He had always declared that he wasn't a fighter really. He wanted to be remembered more as a philosopher, wanted more than anything to be a father, and that fighting was really a way to fund his yearnings for adventure. Ian Daw, himself a fighter from Canada, was a friend of Tanner who lived with him for months. He recalled Evan's one bedroom apartment as being barely furnished, having two mattresses, one for himself and one for guests, without any frames. He had plastic plates and cups for himself and visitors, and a pile of books. Those books included the likes of Siddhartha, Crime and Punishment, and the Tao of Pooh. Following his victory for the middleweight title, Tanner lost the championship to Rich Franklin later that year and also lost his next fight after that to David Loazzo. Even though he won the fight immediately afterwards, beating Justin Levins by submission, Tanner seemed to drift off from fighting like he drifted from everything else. He instead put his focus into starting a foundation that would provide a training camp at his own home in Oregon for underprivileged young athletes. Twelve athletes from different weight classes would train and live in the house. Before long though, this foundation was also something that Evan Tanner just drifted away from. Around the same time, he also decided to take up sailing and drinking. I accepted the fight at UFC 59. They gave me focus for a time, but afterwards, there was nothing. I fell into a deep depression and I traveled all over the country trying to run from it. His friends, including Jorge Gallasso, a Uruguayan sailor Tanner had befriended while the two worked to fix up Evan's newly bought boat, spoke about him being passed out on park benches and starting a case of beer early in the morning and finishing three cases by the end of the day. In October of 2007, Tanner and Gallasso had gone out sailing in the Pacific 
and made it out about 10 miles before the boat began taking on water. Tanner tried to bail out the water for a long time, but the boat eventually sank, with the two men being rescued by a man in a dinghy. That very month, Tanner vowed to give up drinking and return to mixed martial arts, but the damage may have already been done. Upon his return to the UFC in March of 2008, Tanner fought Japanese mixed martial artist Yushin Okami. He lost by knockout in the second round. His next fight was against Kendall Grove. The fight came down to a split decision, but Tanner ultimately lost this fight too. At this point, Tanner had lost four of his last five fights. Even though he was sober at the time, Evan Tanner chalked the losses up to his past struggles with alcohol and wondered if maybe he had done too much damage to his body to come back into the forefront of UFC again. Not long after this loss, Tanner put up a post on his online journal that read, quote, Today, I ran to the store to pick up a few things, and with the lonesome, quiet desert thoughts on my mind, I couldn't help but be struck with their brutally stark contrast to my current surroundings, the amazing congestion in which we exist day to day. Tanner texted a friend along the way in the desert, telling them to contact authorities if they didn't hear from him the next morning. On his dirt bike in the desert, Evan Tanner rode for several hours to the desert region of Palo Verde, California. Temperatures in this area got close to 120 degrees Fahrenheit, and Tanner had planned on refilling his water at a spring that turned out to be dry when he got to it. This left him with plenty of water back at his camp, but none on him out in the middle of the desert. He tried to make it back to his camp in the evening hours. When he didn't respond to any calls or texts the next morning, the authorities were called. Evan Tanner's body was found near Clapp Springs with empty water bottles on September 8, 2008. The Imperial County Sheriff cited heat exposure as the official cause. Evan Tanner was a unique soul in the world of MMA, a fighter with the heart of a poet and the mind of a philosopher, and a man that I myself looked up to in my younger years. From his youth, he was a drifter at heart, a man possessed with a sense of adventure and restlessness that he couldn't abandon, no matter what hardships life threw at him. Given that Tanner saw himself primarily as an adventurer and an explorer, as opposed to a fighter, I can only hope that maybe passing away from the natural forces in a remote corner of the world was not what he considered the worst fate that he could suffer.